All right, great, um, you're here. So let's get started. Okay, so my name is Finola Howard, as you know, for How Great Marketing Works. And this is Ask Finola How, episode 23. Fantastic, so delighted that we're at 23 episodes now. So here is the real question from a real entrepreneur for you today, okay? And this real question is, how do I explain what I do in a couple of sentences? Great question, because we're asked to do that all the time as entrepreneurs, when we're describing our business, when we're pitching for business, when we uh, meet someone at a net networking event and we need to describe what we do really, really succinctly. So it's an important part of your messaging. This entrepreneur has gone into a little bit more detail and I'll just share it with you. She says, I'm struggling with my, our pitch. I have different offerings and different types of customers and I'm finding it hard to get across what I do in a way that covers all of it, okay? I use the standard formula of I help X with X and I think I love it and then I come back to it a couple of days later and I think, oh, that's not me at all, okay? So this is, yes, a common uh, question because we can doubt ourselves in making sure that our messaging is correct, especially when we think we've only a moment in time. It's that lovely elevator pitch idea where, and the elevator pitch idea comes from that idea of when you get into a really tall building, <laughs> if it's a short building, it's not a lot more uh, complicated, but when you get in at the bottom of the elevator and you step into that elevator and you're with your target customer, your ideal customer, and you only have this moment from the bottom floor to the top of the building to get it across. So how can you get it across, okay? So that's what we're gonna work on today. It's a really good one. Okay, so this entrepreneur, and this is a common one also, this entrepreneur has more than one customer, which I'm actually very happy about because I do advocate that. I'm not really pro just having one customer avatar because sometimes when you niche too small, it's just too small to have a viable business. So I think it's good to have different customers you will find that some customers will overlap in what you message to them and others won't, okay? So in this situation, there is a perception that there is no overlap. So let's break it down. So when I'm looking at things like that and looking at stuff where I'm stuck on something or just can't find my way through something, I always start by breaking it down. How can I break this down into the simplest of parts, okay? So yes, sheets of paper abound, okay? So the first thing I would do, okay? So we have to break down what is, how is a normal pitch comp comprised? What are the essences or the key things that you need to hit in a pitch or when you're trying to communicate what you do very succinctly? It's never just kind of uh, a random meander or waffle. There are actually four key things that you wanna get across, okay? So let's break each one of those down. The first thing I want you to break down is who the customers are that you're trying to cover. So if you have more than one, then give them space. So not just one piece of paper here, let's have a piece of paper for every customer because I want you to be in the mindset of each customer and how you're speaking to them at each point. If you have more than one message or you feel at this stage because you're a little bit discombobulated, if you have more than one message to get across, what I want you to do, what's happening is your brain's getting confused. So the first thing that we do is we'll say, okay, let's not confuse our brains, <laughs> okay? So one sheet of paper per customer, okay? And put their name on the top. So it's your description of who they are, or maybe you've named them Fancy Fred or, you know, uh, big medical device company or whatever it is so that you know who they are and you can have them in your mind's eye when you see that name at the top of the sheet of paper. Likely you may have three sheets of paper. I want you at each point to take breaks in between so that you can switch your brain across the three different customers at a time, okay? So just focus on one at a time. So here you go, you've got three sheets of paper three names at the top of the sheet of paper, okay? You take a breath, right? You do the first task. We started to break it down. The second thing that we really want to access now, second step is, what are their pain points, right? You know that we're always trying to solve problems for our customers. So the best way to solve a problem is to really correctly identify their pain point. But the trick here is, 
is to correctly identify their pain point in their language, not yours. We have a tendency because we're, we understand our own processes, we understand our own lingo and we shortcut things. And when we shortcut our language, we actually ignore the customer because what we want to do is find their pain point in the language that they use to express it. Because when we use their language uh, coherently, we actually really access and dial into what is it they're actually saying here and, and also what is it they are actually saying here in their words. And when you can track that and capture their pain point in their words, in their language, you can use that later to reflect back to them. And when you use their language back to them, your customer can feel seen, can know that, oh, you listened. You listened to what I was saying. You listened to where I'm struggling. Wow, that's fantastic. I'm going to pay attention. So this is a way to help you. When you receive their language and note their language, you are able to connect with them. And that's what we want to do with our customers. So your pitch is not about you, it's about them. Your one-liner or your two sentences you want to express is never about you. It's always about them and it's always best expressed in their words, okay? That's step two. Do that for each of your customers. So if you have three sheets of paper, you have their names at the top and underneath all the words that they used when they had conversations with you and when they connected with you, what are the words in the language that they used, okay? Next step, okay? What is your plan to help them? So what is your solution to help them directly address those pain points, okay? That's the next piece you want to express. So is it that you have a process, a method, a product, an answer? What is your answer to solving that pain point? Now, this is an interesting exercise if you don't just do it automatically, but if you ask yourself, does my process method framework, whatever it is, directly address that pain point, that one there, the one that they expressed in their words? Can we see how that connects? So we want to express our answer to their problem in a way that connects to how they identify their problem, how they identify their pain point. Not just nice, fancy language that feels good from a marketing perspective, but great, depth, connected language that directly answers the problem that they have. Because when you use their language back at them to, I, to show them you know who they are and you match their language to yours, you match your solution in their language. Do you understand what I mean? So we have a consistency of language that really, really connects, okay? So this is what we want to do here. So you named them, you reflected their pain points and you expressed the answer to that pain point in a language that they can relate to, okay? And we do this across the board for all three types of customers. Now, be, as you do this process, pay attention to see, is there a pattern emerging here? Can I see something here that's consistent across all of these? Sometimes there is and sometimes there isn't. If there isn't a pattern across all of them at this point, it's very likely that you can't have one overarching pitch to everybody. You may need to actually pitch differently to each customer. And in fact, it's better that you pitch differently to each type of customer because then you are truly listening, truly reflecting. It's okay to have more than one pitch. Who made that rule that you can't have just, that you can't have more than one? So think about it, okay? But we'll come back to pattern in a second. The last thing I want you to think about here is, so because we had nice four steps, right? The last thing I want you to think about is for each of those customers with those pain points, with that solution that you offer them, what does transformation look like? What does it look like? How do you bring a successful conclusion to this story, to this journey that they're on with you? What does transformation look like for you, for them, as you solve that problem for them? And note that down in each place, okay? So you have three customers. What are the three types of transformation? Is 
in each case of each customer is a different transformation required because they are different people. So the transformation may be fundamentally different, may be exactly the same, but the route you go to is slightly different. Think about it, reflect on it, go through this process and spend time on it. It's a powerful uh, polarizing, it's a powerful kind of condensing of what's going on with your customers and even you understanding yourself better and what you bring to the marketplace. So look at the three of them going across and take a moment and go, great, I've done it, okay? At the end then, so you've done these four things, name, pain point, your solution, and what transformation looks like. And now what I want you to do is make a sentence out of that. So in each of these steps, we've actually broken down that pitch into four key, core, four key steps and put those steps together and you will have that sentence for them, okay? I'll give you an example of ours and I'll just read it because I just rejigged it a little bit. So most businesses struggle with making their business reality match their dream. So we created a clear step-by-step -step process that helps them find their sweet spot and build a scalable marketing engine that helps them reach all the people or creatures they were meant to serve in the world. That's one I've just written now for Get Strategic. So think about how you can express that in your business to all of your customers, okay? So if you have three customers, write it separately. Put it into one sentence and then don't stop there. One last thing. Can you see a pattern? Is there an overriding message that could cover all of your customers? If there is, great, capture that. If there isn't, don't worry about it because you weren't meant to communicate necessarily the same way every single time, just consistently. So the consistent piece that you may see that sits above all of this is focusing on this purpose piece that I talk about so much. If you answer that question as we covered in earlier episodes, which is what are you for? The what are you for piece, your purpose articulated, will connect that one line pitch between each of those customers and help express it better. So you don't have to have a single pitch, but you do have to have a single purpose. And you can use them together or separately. And, and it depends on the situation you're in, in a network, all the rest of it. So always think about who your audience is, pitch to your audience in the language that they want to hear, show them the transformation you're gonna make, and that's how it works. This has been episode 23 of Ask Finola How, and I'm so delighted that you joined me. And if you found this useful, please share it with someone else who needs that help. Take care, and I'll see you next week.